In this demo, I'll showcase how customers can use Workaro for building integrations and automations for data consistency. We have set up a data pipeline to sync data between contacts data stored in a SQL Server database table and a data set in the cloud data store that is Snowflake. There are three major steps in this pipeline. First, we'll extract about 100 million rows from the SQL Server table using a SQL query. In the second step, the extracted data is streamed directly into an internal stage on Snowflake using Workaro's on-prem smart shell. And finally, we'll use bulk copy to move the data from the Snowflake internal stage into a staging table in Snowflake. Now let's get right into the product to see how this works. As you can see, my team and I have been working on several integration and automation projects. I've created a project named Data Consistency for this demo. The project contains two folders that include all the assets we'll use for this demo. There are two types of assets. Recipes are the automations that will move the data and connections are the authentications for apps that will participate in this process. Here we're looking at a connection for Snowflake that connects to a specific instance of Snowflake that will load the data into and uses the standard username password authentication type. Let's look at the steps of the automation for this data pipeline. The recipe contains a trigger event, which is a time-based trigger, which kicks off the automation at the predefined schedule. Then the recipe ex executes a series of actions for moving the data from SQL Server database into Snowflake. The scheduler trigger in Workaro gives ultimate flexibility to define time-based triggers. I can set up the frequency of the run in any unit of time, minutes, hours, or months. Or I can choose visual cron for precision scheduling, like running this automation at 2.45 p.m. on the 22nd of June, only on Wednesdays. The next step is a one-time setup that uses Workaro variables to configure standard load parameters like the output file name, name of the source, the staging table name, and the destination table names. As a best practice, we are adding auditability for each load by inserting rows into an audit table that tracks the batch load identifier, Workaro job ID that was associated with the load, source and destination table names, start and end times for the load, and the rows extracted and loaded for reconciliation. In step six, we are executing the SQL query to extract all rows from the source table. The source table name will be replaced with the variable name we provided in step two. The SQL query is ANSI compatible and can be fully customized to use indexes and other optimization schemes available in the SQL Server database. We are generating a CSV file that will be loaded into Snowflake internal stage. Hence, we have chosen a comma delimiter, but users can choose from a variety of delimiter types. Step seven through nine are set up for automatic schema replication to ensure the source and destination table schemas are identical and no column changes in the source are missed when loading data into Snowflake, a very common practice for modern data pipelines. Step nine uses Workaro's unique replicate action available in the Snowflake connector to run the required create and author DDLs for schema management. Step 10 and 11 are focused on preparing the internal stage in Snowflake and using Snowflake's put command natively to move the data from Workaro's own provision to Snowflake internal stage. In step 12, we are using Snowflake's bulk copy utility, but the configuration using Workaro Snowflake connector is much more intuitive and simpler than if it could be used by itself with code or other tools. It just needs the user to provide the stage and the destination table names. At this point, I'm done with building the recipe and I can start the job by simply clicking the start recipe button. Every time this recipe is run, a new job is created in Workaro. This load takes a few minutes to complete, so we can go ahead and look at some past jobs to see how we can track the execution of each step in this data pipeline. 
For that, I'll simply go ahead and filter for the successful jobs and choose the latest run. This is the runtime view of this particular recipe. And I can click on each step to look at the input and output values. In step number four, we are setting up the input parameters for the audit, like which has the source table name, target table name, start timestamp, and so on. In step number six, it shows that the input was a SQL query and the output generated 100 million rows with this particular set of fields. Jumping ahead, in step number 12, we can see the bulk copy command was executed to move the data from the external stage into the Snowflake contacts table, and the output shows 100 million rows were loaded. Uh, just to be sure, let's check in Snowflake if this data was truly loaded. For that, we'll take the job ID and run a simple query, joining the audit table with the contacts table to see the number of rows that was loaded by this job. And as you can see, it shows the same number of rows, which is around 100 million that we saw in the recipe execution. And we can take a look at the sample data to make sure the fields, the data types, everything looks good. And as you can see, the, this is the contact ID, first name, last name, uh, which matches what we saw in the source. 